Can we buy land on moon? I guess we can because this man claims to be the rightful owner of the moon and he's already sold millions of dollars worth of lunar land to people worldwide using a loophole. The moon has always been special for human beings. From ancient calendars to modern day poetry, moon's beauty has captivated civilizations across ages. Besides, the moon is the only celestial body apart from the sun that we can perceive in its full glory. But in 21st century, our fascination with the moon took a new form, the lunar real estate. And guess what? This idea has already been explored in the pop culture, such as in the 1951 short story by Arthur Clarke, If I Forget the O Earth, or Stephen Baxter's 1998 novel, Moon Seed. All these stories explore the idea of the colonization of moon by humans in case of a nuclear war or alien invasion. In India, there have been reports of people buying lunar land as early as 2003. People are buying land on moon as a future investment or a special gift for their loved ones. Late actor Sushant Singh Rajput claimed to own a piece of land near Mare Moscoviance or the Sea of Moscow on the far side of the moon in 2018. Reports indicate that it costed him around 55 lakh Indian rupees or roughly 84,600 US dollars at that time. In a 2009 throwback interview, Bollywood superstar Shah Rukh Khan stated that an Australian woman bought him a lunar land on his birthday. He owns a certain portion of the land near the Sea of Tranquility. As per the latest data, approximately 675 celebrities and three former US presidents are reported to own land on moon and other planets. While some have boldly staked their claim, the question remains, can we really buy land on moon? I mean, is there a legal way of doing this? Moreover, if lunar colonies do emerge eventually, who will control the lunar properties? Would it be like Antarctica where many countries have claimed their territories or it would be governed by the most powerful government here on Earth? Let us look at this crazy story of lunar ownership. My name is Siddharth and you're watching The World of Science. A family that claims to have purchased land on the moon. Chand par zameen li gai hai. Paisa to kaafi kam hai, lekin iska process kaafi kathin hai. In 1967, the United Kingdom, the USSR and the USA signed a treaty called the Outer Space Treaty. This treaty governs the activities of countries in exploring and using outer space including moon and other celestial bodies. Currently, 114 countries are a part of this treaty. The treaty prohibits any country from claiming ownership of outer space or any other celestial body. And now enters the main character of our story, Dennis Ho. He is an entrepreneur from the USA and the head of the Lunar Embassy Corporation in Nevada. Yes, you heard that right. He is the one, the man who sells land on moon because he claims it's his property. Dennis Hope has declared himself as the rightful owner of the moon and believe it or not, he's already sold more than $10 million worth of land on it. To know more about Dennis's story, let's go back to the 80s. Good afternoon, Lunar Amstein Galactic Government Headquarters, may I help you? Yeah, we actually have been selling property on the moon since uh, 1980. Dennis Hope was going through a tough time in life. He was jobless and he was going through a divorce. And in search of making a fortune, he turned towards the real estate market. But instead of looking at the Earth, he was looking at the Moon. And after going through the documents of the Outer Space Treaty, he found a loophole. The treaty clearly states that no country shall claim ownership of outer space or any other celestial body. But it never said anything about individual ownership. Genius, isn't he? In an interview back in 2013, Dennis told the reporters that he had sent a declaration of ownership to the United Nations stating his intentions of subdividing and selling the moon. However, he never heard back from them. So he assumed that he could own the moon. And there onwards, he claimed himself to be the rightful owner of the moon. Well, if nobody is objecting to it, then one can do whatever they want. At least, theoretically. On his official website, lunarembassy.com, he claims that the San Francisco County seat of the U.S. Governmental Office for Claim Registries had accepted and registered his claim for the entire lunar surface as well as the surface of all other eight planets as well as their moons. 
Next, he sent his request to the UN and after not getting any contestation from the US or the Russian government, he took this next step of copywriting with the US Copyright Registry Office. And with this, he became the largest landowner on the planet Earth, maybe even the galaxy, who knows. And ever since, he has claimed to sell more than 611 million acres on the surface of Moon, Mercury, Mars, Venus and Io. But who are these buyers? According to his website, among the proud land buyers on the surface of Moon are former US Presidents George Bush, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan and as many as 675 well-known celebrities have done business with him. And in total, he has nearly 6 million property owners. This is not the end. In 2004, he claimed to have founded the Democratic Galactic Government that represents the owners with a constitution, a congress, a currency and a patent office. And not just that, he has offered many national governments with a huge amount of loan called the Loan of Delta, which is the currency that is supposed to be used by the property owners. Now you must be wondering how to buy land on the surface of Moon. Well, if you want to purchase, you have to give $19.99 per acre on the surface of Moon along with $10 in shipping, $1.5 for planetary and lunar tax and $2.5 for ownership certificate. Once the land is selected and purchased, the owner receives an image of the land that he's purchased as well as the ownership certificate. But not just that, on their website, the planet Pluto is up for sale in its entirety for just $250,000. That's insane, man. But Dennis Hope isn't the only one in the lunar real estate business. Robert R. Coles, former chairman of the New York's Hayden Planetarium, founded the Interplanetary Development Corporation and has sold plots on the surface of Moon at the rate of $1 per acre. Despite Hope's belief that there's a loophole in the space treaty and can be used for individual ownership, experts and legal scholars dispute Hope's lunar enterprise. I guess the word lunatic exists for a reason. According to Ram Jaku, a law professor at the Institute of Air and Space Law at McGill University, the moon is a common property of the international community and no individual or state can own it. And that's very clear in the UN Treaty. Individuals' rights cannot prevail over the rights and obligations of any state. No one owns the moon. No one can ever own any property in outer space. Not only this, China and Canada have already prosecuted individuals who are trying to sell lunar plots. So far, the Outer Space Treaty remains a crucial barrier to individual lunar ownership. So while owning a piece of moon might seem like a fascinating idea, it is more symbolic than legally binding. You cannot own any properties in outer space because there is no law that allows you to do so. And despite the audacious attempts of the lunar real estate agents, the outer space and the celestial bodies remain shared properties, waiting for the next chapter in our exploration of the outer space. So, did you find this video interesting? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the world of science. Until next time, stay scientific. Rolling, land on moon, take 251. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. Let me see what's the cost of land on a Jupiter and Mars. In other words, I can share. In other words, baby, subscribe. Subscribe, alright? Please.